Jeff Fisher from High School Football America, heading back to my old stomping grounds. Uh, grew up in the Lehigh Valley, as most of you know, in eastern Pennsylvania, but I spend a lot of my weekends in the Poconos. And on the other side of the box here is um, Matt Walters, the head coach at East Stroudsburg South High School. He's joining me to talk about a, a, an interesting little video project that uh, turned even more interesting because, I guess, of COVID-19 last year. Uh, thanks for joining me, Coach. Thank you, Jeff. Let's talk about this a little bit. And uh, to set the stage, not everybody knows what went on in Pennsylvania. I do, because again, you can take Pennsylvania, you know, Jeff out of Pennsylvania, but can't take Pennsylvania out of Jeff. So uh, you guys had a tough go last year. So set the scene on what you guys had to do at your school and, and in Pennsylvania in general to play football in 2020. Yeah, just a, a roller coaster ride. You know, it started where everything got shut down in, in March. Um, you know, the schools got shut down. We thought it was just for two weeks. You know, I still remember being in the weight room. It was March 13th, um, Friday the 13th. And, uh, you know, we were just like, hey, it's a two week break. You know, still work at home. We'll be back by the end of the month. And, you know, as everybody else knows, you know, the world kind of turned upside down. And, uh, what we didn't know when we were going to see our kids again. And then that was the scariest thing is that, you know, towards June, if I went to bed so many nights telling myself, we're not going to have a season, you know, I really thought that, you know, that this thing was going to go way into the fall. And uh, it wasn't until the middle of June when the PIAA got together and they kind of okayed it, but with a ton of precautions, a ton of rules. Um, so, so we did not see our kids until July. And that's when our season um, officially kicked off. And, you know, it, it was in a pod format where, you know, we could only have a groups of 10, you know, at once. So it was never even a team thing. Um, but, but hats off to, to everybody that, that got it done, you know, for, for so many, for so many nights, you know, when, when talking with the other local coaches, you know, the, just saying there, there's no way this is happening. But uh, when we saw other states started to open up, you know, you're down in Georgia. I know that Georgia had their full season and that, that gave us confidence that, you know what, we might be able to get this thing. Um, so with that, it, towards the end of July, um, District 11, you know, Eastern Pennsylvania, they decided that they were going to do a county only approach to the regular season. Um, so, so that took our 10 game season and it shrunk it in half to, to five. Um, so, you know, we had our five games set, you know, I, I think at that point, I think everybody was just thankful for the opportunity to play football, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, from East Stroudsburg South's perspective, you know, this, this was a team that, that we've been waiting for, for a long time. You know, we knew the seniors that we had coming in, it was a special group and, uh, we, we were really fortunate to, to have those five games, you know, to at least showcase, you know, our talents. And, you know, it was a pretty scary time because the rule was if you had one COVID case, your team was shut down for, for two weeks minimum, you know, so, so that was a scary thing to deal with, but our team did a great job with it, you know, starting in July, you know, to, to our administrators, to, to our families, to our players, to our coaches, um, you know, we did everything that we could to make sure that safety was our type, uh, our top priority. And, you know, we were able to do that all the way until the end of the season. You know, we didn't have one case from July all the way to November. Um, and then it came to the point where our district um, needed to decide, do we want to send a District 11 representative to the state tournament, or do we just want to host our District 11 tournament? Just because of timing, you know, we started our season a little bit later. So we needed to make that decision. And uh, of the 46 District 11 schools, um, there, there were three schools that, that voted to have the state tournament. You know, East Strasburg South was one of them. Um, and some two other private schools in District 11. So, you know, that, that got shut down. You know, District 11 decided that we were not going to enter the state tournament. So, so we just had our own district tournament. Um, you know, I, I understand that completely. But um, how disappointed you know, were you, though? Because as you and I talked the other day before when we decided to do this interview, and, and one of the schools, my good friend Phil Stamboy, who I've heard on, had on here a lot, he's from Notre Dame High School. How disappointed were you? Because you said, this was kind of the lead up, right? These, these kids came through the system and there may have been a deep run. So how did, how did you handle that as, as the head coach uh, with your staff and with the players? You probably knew that 2020 could have been pretty special. Yeah, you know, and having a lot of talks with our athletic director, Denise Rogers, you know, with, 
we definitely wanted that state playoff run, you know, and, and all the local coaches, you know, the phone calls that I got saying, you need to fight to get this team in the state tournament. You know, you, you guys might have a shot at this. And, you know, East Stroudsburg isn't known to be, you know, a state powerhouse, you know, so to have that opportunity, you know, with knowing the kids that we had, um, to, to be told that, that we weren't going to have a state tournament, you know, it was definitely disappointing at that time, but, you know, at East Stroudsburg, we focus on what we can control and, uh, you know, we, we just focus our, our season on winning a district championship and, uh, but, but definitely disappointing, you know, we always talk to the kids about, you know, that taking that trip to Hershey, you know, Hershey Park hosts our, uh, district, uh, the state titles here at Pennsylvania. So, you know, to have that opportunity, uh, we were pretty disappointed, but th there, there was no right answer, you know, to, to doing this, you know, I, I understand all the other 43 district 11 schools that voted no to have their district tournament. Um, Cause you, you want more teams playing football. And, and I totally get that instead of just having one representative. So, you know, it, it's a seesaw battle with it, you know, but, but we took it and we just went along with it. Uh, how, how good was the team uh, folks uh, averaging 62 points a game over four? Now we don't know if it would have held up over a 10 or a 15 game schedule or not, but you, you obviously had some offensive weapons there. Uh, I, I mean, the only teams that may have averaged more are probably the, you know, the eight man teams were, were six man teams were a, a games like a pinball machine. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I do know that we led the state, um, of Pennsylvania with 62 a game. Not sure if that's a country record this season, but, uh, you know, just the offensive firepower that we had, you know, so some of our kids, three-year starters, you know, like, like I said, you know, we saw this group when they were in seventh grade and we knew that, you know, the 2020 season was going to be special. Um, you know, the our running back, Christian Arrington, he's going to Clarion University. He averaged 10 yards a carry um, every time that we ran the football. You know, our quarterback, Will Fish, I think, he had 800 yards passing through the first two games. Um, so, you know, just the talent that we had, yeah. um, you know, it, I, I still think we would have had a shot at state, you know, that it would have been a great opportunity for us. Well, let's face it. Football's about teaching young men, you know, lessons in life. And they learned a, a big one. That's for sure. Um, before we get into the, the documentary and, and how that all came about and, and what it's about um, you, you mentioned tradition. And, and before we started taping this, I said to you, I, I can still take myself back to Mr. James Mungro in the 90s, uh, one of the, uh, I'm going to say probably the greatest East Stroudsburg Cavalier there was there at the Purple Pit. But, um, you know, the, talk a little bit about, you know, the, that tradition that you have there. Yeah, so it's something that we take a lot of pride uh, in. And, you know, our, our motto was to protect our tradition. Um, you know, over 70 years of high school football here, um, you know, the town closes down on Friday nights. It's a small town vibe. Um, you know, we have a lot of support from our community. Um, as you mentioned, Ed Christian, you know, the, the dean of area high school football coaches, I, I think he's the dean of all high school football coaches in the country, you know, for just what he's built here at East Stroudsburg, you know, and the way that he did it, he, he always did it right. And I think that's the main message from East Stroudsburg South football is that, you know, when, when teams come to play us, when teams see our program, you know, I, I think the main message or the main thing that coaches say or players say about us is that we try to do it right in, in everything that we do. And, you know, Ed Christian built that foundation here. And that, that's just something that, that we take a lot of pride in. And, you know, when you talk about tradition with East Stroudsburg South, you talk about our rivalry with Stroudsburg High School, you know, that that battle for the Little Brown Jug has been going on for years. Um, so it's special to be a part of, you know, if you win the game on the road, you take the walk over the bridge, you know, back back to your hometown with the little brown jug. So, you know, a very tradition rich program. And, and you know, I'm very blessed to be here. Yeah, I, I remember. And, and for those of you who don't know, James Mungro had a, a nice uh, you know, career in the in the NFL. Uh, I remember Coach Christian telling me, um, I think it was the day that that he was deciding on where he was going to play his college football. And uh you know, I, I was kind of asking, you know, how he helped, you know, James and, and become a better player. And he's like, no, nah, I, I was just blessed that James showed up in the Cavalier uniform. He said, I had nothing to do with it. That's kind of the, uh, the, the humility of Coach Christian. So let's let's get into this. So, you know, a big year, big run. Is that why uh, you have an opportunity or someone in the community, I guess, wanted to bring a camera and follow you guys a little bit? What what was the impetus for cameras being with the Cavs in 2020? Yeah, so, so we have an independent filmmaker, um, Scott Silva, who, who lives in East Stroudsburg. Um, his son is on our football team, um, and he, he's been on big-time shows, you know, 90 Day Fiance. He, he's the co-executive producer of the Return to Amish, that show on TLC. So a ton, ton of experience out of Scott Silva. And he approached me before the pandemic hit saying, 
hey, you know, you know, with all these shows, I'm watching Hard Knocks, you know, I'm seeing these shows on, you know, the overtime, you know, and, you know, what you used to do at Pius X, you know, you did bring that up. And uh, he's like, what if we show everybody what East Stroudsburg is and what East Stroudsburg football is, the ins and out of this program? Um, you know, it's, I went to bed a, a lot of nights thinking over it, you know, are we going to really put cameras in the coach's office? Are we going to put cameras on the sideline? You know, it, so we, we decided to go with it. And, you know, it just tells the story of a small town football um, school who, who just tries to do things the right way. And, you know, obviously with the talent that we had, you know, we thought that it could be a pretty interesting story to tell, to tell not just our area, but to tell the country, you know, of how important high school football is. You know, by, by no stretch are we the IMG Academies of the world, you know, or, or the St. Joe's Prep um, down in Philadelphia, you know, by, by no stretch are, are we that school. But we're a school that I think a lot of other communities in this country can connect to. And, and when they watch the documentary, I think they can see a lot of similarities. You know, what, what I went through, what our kids went through this season, um, and how a community gets together and how they rally behind our football team. So, so I, I think that hits a lot of players differently, you know, when, you know, from states from Arkansas, from Georgia, from Minnesota, you know, it, there, there's a connection there. Yeah. And, you know, to, to just follow us and, you know, to, to have the, um, the season end the way that it did, um, you know, so when we didn't have the state tournament, you know, we focused on the district tournament and three hours before our district playoff game, um, we were told that we had a positive case on our team. And at that time, we had to forfeit our season. You know, they couldn't delay the playoff system any longer for us. So, you know, earning the number one seed, earning home field advantage throughout the tournament, um, to, to have that ripped out, you know, three hours, you know, pro probably the toughest three-hour period, you know, as a player, as a coach here at East Stroudsburg, you know, to, to, to tell those seniors um, our season's done, yeah. you know, that you're, you're not playing another home game. You're, you're not looking – you know, you're, you're not playing for a district title anymore. Um, the, definitely the hardest, the hardest by far moment of my career here at East Stroudsburg. And, you know, the documentary goes through that, you know, what, what we had to do as players, as coaches, as a community, um, and, and how we rallied and how, how we uh, got past that point. Yeah, video, video doesn't lie. That's, that's for sure, Coach. Um, what'd you learn about yourself? I, I, I've known several coaches. And as you said, I've, I've done this on my own going into coaches locker rooms with the camera. Uh, you got to have a lot of trust. A, I mean, you got to, got to trust the guy with the camera. And I had that with Phil Stamball when I was doing it high as a 10th. Um, but, but, you know, when you look back on it, what'd you learn about yourself? Because I remember one coach and I won't name who he is, but he's a pretty famous guy uh, came to me the day after the first episode aired and said, they put in a lot of cursing. And I said, mm, no, <laughs> you, may, you, may, you may have been cursing, coach. They had a use a bleep button. But anyway, right. you learn about yourself. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and that was the thing. You know, Scott and I have a really close relationship. So the trust was there, you know, in, in terms of that. But as I mentioned, you know, we, we try to do things right here. So, you know, we, we weren't hiding anything, you know, in particular. I would just say my emotion is very evident on the sideline on Friday nights. So I have to thank my assistant coaches for, for keeping me calm and cool and collective uh, on game night. You know, I tend to uh, tend to get after it a little bit. I'm fired up, you know, when that first kickoff goes off. So, uh, what are you supposed to do? That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> You know, it's a game played and coached by emotional people. But but to actually see that on the side, you know, there, there are some games where I just put my, you know, my hands to my face and be like, man, why, why was I so fired up about that one small thing? But, uh, you know, definitely trying to keep my composure a little bit more after watching the documentary, that's for sure. Yeah, like I said, it was it was funny. I can remember that walk into that person's lock uh, uh, office the day after it aired. It aired on ESPN, so if people want to kind of start putting one plus one together, they might figure out who the coach is that I'm talking about. But yeah, that was that was the funniest thing I ever had uh, happen there. So so it, it's all done. Where if, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, go to highschoolfootballamerica.com. We have a whole story here. Plus, we are also posting the documentary itself. So tell, uh, tell the audience here a little bit about how you unveiled it, uh, how it was received, 
Um, I, I, I guess there was probably highs and lows, right? There was the high that there's this great documentary uh, showing our great student athletes and our coaches and our community. And oh darn, uh, see, I didn't curse there. I could have <laughs> cursed. Oh, oh darn, we had a possible state championship run ripped away from us by COVID. So what was, what was the overall uh, view of it and how did you unveil the documentary to the community? Yeah, so when the documentary was finished last month, um, Scott had a great idea of calling our local movie theater. You know, as I said, small community, small town, um, trying to help them out. And, and they were more than welcome to, to invite us to, to our local movie theater. So we brought the players back. You know, it, it was the first time that we got our program together um, since that meeting that we had after we were told that our season was over. So it was great to see everybody together again. Um, you know, we rented out the movie theater and our kids saw it for the first time. And then we released it to the public. Um, and like you said, you know, what a roller coaster ride this documentary is. It's very long. It, you know, it's a full length movie. It's an hour, 48 minute long documentary. So, you know, it, it goes inside our program to every detail of what happened. So, um, in the beginning, you know, there was tons of laughter in the, you know, in the movie theater with our kids. But when it got to that night, you know, you you could hear a pin drop in there. You know, it, it was very emotional, you know, trying to go back to there. And, uh, you know, just just to have that moment and just to relive that moment, it was very emotional for, for our players, for our staff. Um, but but I think that's what makes this documentary so good is that you actually see the highs and lows of it. You know, we don't take anything out of it. Um, you know, and towards the end, you know, there was, you know, our parents said that they had their tissue boxes out because, you know, it, it did get emotional. Uh, but but just an unbelievable story. You know, Scott Silva did, did a great job following our program and to, just to show the country, you know, just, just what a small town in Pennsylvania uh, can do and, and how high school football can really change a community and, you know, really instill some good things into our players. Yeah, I uh... Still one of my favorite places to watch a high school football game. I'm going to have to, the next time you're there in the stadium, have you click a couple of pictures for our stadium project. But uh, the Purple Pit is special. I mean, I, I it, it's not Allen's $60 million Taj Mahal, but, but folks, this is great. What, how, how do you feel about the pit? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, I called this home since I was five years old, you know, play, playing youth football in purple and white, getting to play at the high school, you know, and then growing up and, you know, it, it's our backyard, you know, and that, that's the great thing about our stadium is that you look behind the south end zone and, and there's East Stroudsburg South High School in big letters, home of the Cavaliers. Um, before we had our turf renovation done, and, and you're going to know this, um, in 2009, we got our turf project done. But before then, the visiting bleachers were in front of the track. So if you were a visiting team coming to the Purple Pit, you had parents, fans, right? the two feet behind you yeah. um you know so so create a very close atmosphere to it you know where maybe a 2000 fan attendance game it, it, it felt like 5000 you know just for how everybody was so close um but but you know as you said the richest tradition in monroe county in terms of football you know so so many great athletes have played on this turf in this field over the years um and it's just it's a great place to call home yeah, I played uh, my, my junior peewee football and peewee football there. I, I remember, and, and to be honest with you, that, that was, I think at that point, that was the only school or area, because, you know, youth football isn't tied to the high school, but I think you guys were the only ones that played on the high school field. Like Wilson, where I played, did not play at Wilson High School. I think you were the only one. So that's kind of unique. Do, does the, the youth system still do that there? Yeah, you know, we still host our, our Sunday morning with, with the youth program. You know, the our staff does a, a nice job of going there, you know, watching our future Cavaliers play at the place that they're going to be calling home. You know, and I think that's what's so important with our tradition is that, you know, you play here when you're five years old till you're 18. You know, at the same place you play, you know, you call this place home and you protect it. You know, you try to do everything you can to, to make sure that you can stamp your legacy at the Purple Pit.